wants to talk about geography and ideology. That intrigued me. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, this this war that the Democrats and the left are waging that dominate the cities are waging on conservatives and Republicans who dominate the rural areas. Uh, I, I don't see what they hope to get out of it because the the conservatives and the Republicans pretty much, you know, per, in the rural areas provide the food and resources that the 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 people in the cities depend on for to survive. You know, they need us. We don't need them to survive. Yet they're waging all out war on rural America and the people who produce the things that everybody has to have to survive. I just I wanted to make that point. Well, well, if you if you look at a, some examples from history, the French Revolution. Uh, also um, collectivization under the Soviet Union, um, they can use an economic collapse and then stir the population of the cities up into anger against the farmers. In the French Revolution and in the um, Soviet Revolution, they were able to go out into the countryside, in the case of Ukraine, create the, the uh, starvation famine intentionally, um, the people in the cities, you'll always be able to raise a militia to go out to the country and put the jackboots to those those farmers that they will say are hoarding the food. You know, the farmers have the food out in the country and they're starving the cities because they won't get with the new five year program and and follow their orders and bring the uh, food into the cities. Of course, this is nonsense because the you know, by ordering farmers to produce food at a, at a loss to themselves, they're not going to plant. I mean, they're going to, they're, why would they? But it's been, it's been an effective ta tactic in the past because you can mobilize huge populations in the cities, put them on trucks. And what do you do if you have a farm with uh, 10 people living on it? And here comes, you know, a truckload of, or truckloads of hundreds of angry city dwellers and they're out there to get the food. You know, you'll absolutely destroy the farm. No more food will be produced, and the country will be further ruined. So you would say, all right, well, why would socialists want to do that? You have to understand, the worse the crisis, as Lenin put it, the worse, the better. So the farms are absolutely destroyed. Nothing's being produced. It's worse than ever in the cities. But this allows them to kind of, in a loop, create the conditions where they get the city people even angrier and angrier, but their anger is not focused on the socialist leaders that caused this wreckage. Their anger is focused on those, those uh, uh, white boomers, rural farmers, you know, the, those bitter clingers with their God and their guns. They're the ones that are stopping the socialist utopia from coming into existence. Of course, this won't produce one loaf of bread obviously. But to the NPC drones that are the militia army for the, for the uh, statists, they're too dumb to understand that. They're just going to be brainwashed. They're going to be told the rich white farmers have all the food, they're holding it, we need to go out and get it. The, the reason um, I took that last call, it's really near and dear to my heart, or I wish it wasn't, because um, it's like uh, anticipating a disaster. This rural versus urban split is going to be the real dividing line for Civil War II if it comes, and I think that it will. If there's another Civil War, it's going to be fought at the zip code level. It's going to be one side of the street against the other side of the street. And there are absolute lessons that can be learned from studying other modern Civil Wars.